Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this week, we will learn how to build map by using Telmap, how to use C-sharp script to control our player movement, camera controller, singleton pattern and things transition with fade in and fade out. I will separate several mini videos to publish. In this video, I will review the Telmap system. Although I have made some related Telmap video, I will also want to review this part. Okay, let's get started. All right, let's create one 2D project. During Open the Unity, we can preview some sprite assets in this case. All resources and complete project can be downloaded by the link below. Also, if you want to learn more coding sections, you can go to my channel and find more. After opening the Unity, let's create one sprite folder to store our sprite assets. The assets are downloaded from the website. You can go to the ITCH website and search for the Unity Assets Pack to find some resources what you want. Also, I will give the links below and credit these sprites. Save your project first and change the thing's name. Now we can create our tile map. Right click on hierarchy and choose to the 2D object tile map. You will notice that there are many grid lines appears in the scene view. We name our first tile map as ground tile map. Hold Command D or Control D to duplicate the first tile map. The next tile map is named for shadow tile map. The third tile map we give it another name called war tile map. Then we change their orders in the hierarchy. The shadow should be on the topmost position in the grid, and it will work as the background color in this map. Now we start to create some sorting layers. We can set three different sorting layers for convenience. We call them background, middleground, and foreground. Sorting layers allows you to set the render order of multiple sprites easily. In this case, all tile maps are set to background sorting layer. Ordering layer are used by sprite render and determines the render order of the sprites in a scene. We set the shadow tile maps order to zero. Then the ground tile map we gave him the order number is one. For the wall tile map the order is two. Before we drag all sprites into the tile palette window, we have to look at the sprite settings in the inspector. First thing first, we must choose to the multiple type of the sprite mode. Then look at the max size selections. Because our sprite size in this case is 160 plus 160, so our max size should be little bigger than his size will be better. Then in the filter mode selection, choose to the pointer no filter selection, which allows your texture pixels become blocked up close. Pointer lets your tiles has no gap, no white lines between each closing tiles. Then press the apply button. You can easily drag the empty space to test how much size is one single unit. In this sprite, one sprite is 16 pixels. Then choose to the slice by count size and press the slice button. Finally, don't forget to bank to the pixels per unit and change from the default value from 100 to 16 pixels. If you forget this change, your image will be smaller than you think. The number of pixels of width and height in the sprite image that's corresponding to one distance unit in world space. And then we are going to create one tile palette. Actually, Tile Palette works as one container to save your tile assets in this project. Tile assets will be generated by their each sprites later. If you want to make one RPG games, you may plan to make one forest environment, one underwater cities, and uh, one tower places. Each level has different map styles, so we can create different tile palettes to manage our different tile assets. Okay, back to our current step. Tile palettes will be created as one classical blue cube, just like the same as our prefab logo. We call our first tile palette dungeon. We will put all tile assets inside this palette.
drag and drop sprites from the assets folder onto the tile palette. Choose where to save the new tile assets. New tile assets are generated in the selected folder and the tiles are placed on the tile palette. You can see there are a bunch of sprites being converted into the assets now. Using one folder to save these assets will be handy for your organize your project. Okay, we can build our map now. The main reason I create a shadow tile map is that I would like to use one dark color to draw the background. Another most direct way to set the background color is to change the camera color. In this tutorial, we build one shadow background color. Alright, that's our game base color. We have to check every time whether our selected tile map in hierarchy is matched with the active tile map slashing in the tile palette window or not. If you ignore this part, it will cause some errors later. Each time when I try to paint on one of the tile maps, I will check twice. I will click twice. One click is the tile map in hierarchy. Another click is the active tile map. Double check can be beneficial in a lot of ways. So we start to draw our ground tail map. Don't forget to check each time we are on the ground tail map. Make sure they are the same tail map. Firstly, I'm used to draw the overview of the map. Let's use our imagination. Okay, we have almost finished our ground tile map. You can try to enable and disable the tile map game object to check our current process. Then we are going to draw our war tile map. That might be a little difficult for us in the first time because the image is strange to us. I have practiced this by so many times for tutorial. You can double check your current tile map. You can see that our tile map has covered in another two tile maps. The reason is our sorting layers, right? You can first roughly draw the wall and then focus on the details, such as the corner places. That's very feasible method for me. Every time you can check my current tile map position, it will be a disaster if you find your ground tile map appears on the wall tile map. It will cost a bunch of time to find this result. Using one single tile assets can be save your work to build the map faster. Check again, we are on the wall tile map. And the active tile map in the tile palette window is also display wall tile map. During making the tile map, you will be familiar with each tile in the tile palette. If you can familiar with each tile visual function, it will increase your work.
Everyone needs time to understand and try to lock each tiles function in the map. Just be patient and enjoy the design map. Now we can check our tile map now. We are finding some errors on here. We can enable and disable to see which tile maps goes wrong. Now we found the shadow tile map. We can try to disable each tile map to find which tile should be erased. Finally, we can paint the empty tiles and paint to the dark tile. Then we can check the layer on the last time. If you want to make your games more attractive, our sprites has offered many shadow ground in the sprites. If you see carefully, you will notice that inside the wall, there are many squares with the dark shadow lines. The easiest way to build that is disable the wall and the disable the shadow tile map game object. You can only see the ground tile map. Press the pen tool to paint our ground. In other words, new tile will replace our old tile. I can't prove that there is no error during creation. Each time I will try to save your times and record more videos. Even that I cannot prove that I can finish without any problems. The only thing that we can try is to find the issue and try to solve this issue. It seems correct now. Okay, we have almost complete our first level now. If you want something more attracting in this level, you can set different tile maps and draw what you want. It depends on your imagination. Oh wait, we did not finish yet. Our wall is fake. It cannot limit our player movement. We forgot to set the collider component. Select the wall tile map game object and add the tile map collider 2D. And then we can see there are many collider box appear on the scene view. But it costs many performance for our calculation in unit. We will never touch such area, but the unit create a bunch of space. It will give unit much pressure if we make a big game later. So we can click the use by composite and save your performance. But we did not have any composite collider component yet. Adding one composite collider 2D component. After that, you will see there are only some rectangular green lines now. Another error we have ignored is if we press the play button, the wall will fall down. The reason is that when we add the composite collider component, the Unity automatically add the rigid body component to us. The rigid body 2D component body type is dynamic, which has the gravity force. So we can change the body type to kinematic, or still use the dynamic body type and change the gravity force to zero. Now this is a coding challenge for your guys to create another tail map called War Decoration and paint some additional images to decorate our map. You can pause the videos and review what you learned in this video. Okay, let's finish this tutorial. Set the sorting layer to 3 and make sure the tile map is the top of the sorting layer order in the background sorting layer.
Also, if you want to have one different floor instead of the single color, you can choose to the dark color and repaint your ground tile map. All changes depends on your emotion. In the following video, we will talk about the scene transition, player movement, camera control, and a singleton pattern in Unity. So we will have at least two scenes in this game. I will publish another tile map video on my YouTube channel about creating another two maps. If you want to learn how the Unity code directly, I will also offer the complete map project on my Google Drive and welcome to download it and start from the coding section. If you want to review the tile map 2D, welcome to see more videos on my channel. Finally, save your things and continue to build your next two levels. In the next video, I will talk about the simple player movement and camera follow. I will introduce two API methods. One is called victor3.lerp, another is the math.clamp. Alright, thanks for watching these videos. Also, hope to smash the like button and subscribe my channel. I will so appreciate. Alright, see you in the next time.